At the start of the series, we were described as a joke. Humiliated in several games in our first season in charge and only surviving by the skin of our teeth. But despite the abhorrent beginning to life of the Rigamonte, things changed very quickly. Six seasons about to be closed, Brescia have won three straight Serie A titles and our boys have become men in such a short space of time. No longer a laughing stock, but a team to be feared and a manager who's got a chip on his shoulder due to being overlooked in the award voting once again. I'm not bitter. I'm just saying it how it is. I should be winning this thing every single season. What's going on, guys? And welcome back to another episode of the Common Country. It's episode number 57. Today we're returning with the season finale as we wrap up season six with our first ever Champions League final. Yep, just our second season in the competition and Little Brescia have gone all the way, knocking out the holders, Bayern Munich, Borussia Dortmund, who have become the best side in Germany, and also Atletico Madrid for the second straight year to set up the grand finale at the Stadio Olimpico against Paris Saint-Germain, who are overwhelming favourites to win this competition. Still, Thomas Tuchel is in charge and they have signed some absolute star players in world football since the save began and kept hold of some of their best players as well. Kylian Mbappe is now peaking at 26 years old and is surely regarded as the best footballer in the world right now. Kai Havertz and Leon Bailey joined from Bayer Leverkusen together four years ago to form a fantastic partnership here at the uh, part of France. Rodrigo Benzica came in from Juventus a few years ago. They signed Lucas Hernandez from Atletico Madrid, uh, sorry, Bayern Munich even, after he spent nine years at Atletico Madrid as well. They've also kept Marquinhos and Neymar, despite the fact that the Brazilians are now in their 30s as well. It is a remarkable team, and without question, if not the best team in the world, then certainly one of the best teams in the world. They've dominated French football in the game as much as they have in real life as well, won the title every single season, as we know this season, won it with 34 wins in 38 games, only losing once with a goal difference of plus 100. I mean, we free Peter, but to be honest here, Paris Saint-Germain are definitely, without question, the third favourites to win this one. So regardless of what happens, I'm not going to be too disappointed. I think we will lose. We are major underdogs, no doubt about it. But just a free Pete in this area for the first time ever in my football manager career, if you have never done it before, to free Pete with little Brescia Calcio. I've got to say, regardless of what happens tonight, of course I want to win, but I'm not going to be too disappointed. This has been an amazing, amazing season, an amazing three seasons at the Rigamonte as well. So whatever happens, I'm still happy with the outcome. You know, just getting to the final is an achievement in its own merit. I didn't think we'd get through Bayern Munich in round of 16, and instead, after knocking them out, Dortmund and Fletico, here we are. Little Brescia Calcio in the Champions League final. Come on, baby. Let's pull off the upset of all upsets. Heading to the game, as you can see, we'll stick with the Gigan Press system. Lord knows we'll not be using that Tiki Taka again for a while after what happened against Bologna on the final day, and this will be our team. Nobody's really injured apart from Simonetti. We can have a slight knock. He's not going to be part of the squad anyway, and this will be our team. It is the 4123 Gigan Press system, which has not been adjusted much since we started using it back in season two. And this is our lineup for the grand finale. Odero's in goal, the back four is Pellegrini, Sistana, Armini, De Paolo, Storaro, Mergi, who's been fantastic in this competition, and Viviani through the middle. Salcedo and Picardi are the inside forwards, and Esbozito is, of course, up top. Won the golden boot in this area, should win in the Champions League as well. And I would say, really, any chance of us pulling off the unlikely and winning the Champions League hinges on our number nine tonight, showing everyone he is the best striker in world football. No pressure, Sebastiano. And on the bench, Moller, Parola, Bonifaz, Papetti, Muri, Viscucci, Barbieri, De Sisto, Gavoni, Anderson, Del Monte, and Claudio Franchi as well. First and only game, it's the first ever Champions League final. Forza Brescia, major underdogs, but let's pull off the shock and win the grand finale. And so this is Paris Saint-Germain's team. It's got some decent experience in there with the likes of Virgil van Dijk, captain in the team, and Neymar on the left. They do have Alex Meritz, uh, the Italian, in goal as well. He's been sublime this season for PSG. A star-studded bench as well. There is absolutely no doubt about it. We are rank outsiders to win this competition. We were, even when the competition began. I said we'd get through the group. I thought we would. We did. And, well, to get to the final in just our second season in the competition, I've got to say, I've been very, very happy. So regardless of what happens, I'll still be delighted. But I'm going to be very passionate in my team talk. Very passionate indeed. And say to the boys, get out there and prove to everyone that you are winners. Because we are. Three straight Serie A titles. <laughs> Just forget about what happened in the cup again this season. But in the Champions League, the final, Paris Saint-Germain, we can do this. Come on. Huge underdogs. 
Huge, huge underdogs. I expect PSG to have a lot of the ball tonight, and that's exactly how it started off as well. The power leaves up a slight knock, but he's okay to soldier on out there. And 20 minutes into the game, it is still 0-0. Our body language is better than theirs, which you know to me means that we basically won the trophy already. <laughs> but half an hour in, it's still goalless. Sometimes the biggest games can be letdowns. We've waited a while for our first chance, and now we're going to get it. Alex Merritt receives the back pass and plays it through to Lucas Hernandez. A PSG build from inside our own half, and Kai Havert offloads to Neymar down this left wing he's got Viviani to beat centers to the middle and Luka Jovic's header finds the back of the net one former Barcelona player to a Real Madrid player and the Serbian gives PSG the lead 33 years old but still has the class Neymar he's lost his physical ability but his technical stats are still sublime what a brilliant delivery that is to the back stick there as he bends it with the side of his boot Jovic beats Pellegrini in the air and Odero gets a touch but can't keep it out free kick for Brescia who's looking for an instant response and we've got it as well and it's Viviani with the leveller talk about the instant responses there Storara I've talked about him before he's not just a hard worker he's got great ability from set pieces Pieces. Most of his assists come from dead ball situations. Which one in? Merritt gets caught in no man's land. And Mattia Viviani, only his second of the year, but his most important. 1 1, and we peg PSG right back on level terms. Now, out of nowhere, this game has exploded into life. Storaris Pellegrini down left hand side. One man to beat. Can he beat him and cross? He can't. He's blocked. And Salcedo has to track it down to make sure we keep possession in our favour. Got the Pauli out there, mate. The Pauli. Picardi's going to receive it first, and he's tackled by Miranda, but wins it straight back. Don't don't worry about going back, man. If we've got to keep possession in our favour, that's fine. PSG are playing very narrow, I notice. Very narrow indeed, as Picardi. Oh! Had his shot blocked, and Esbozito should have finished it. Denied by Italy teammate Alex Merritt. That should have been 2 1. As Storaro's corner is headed away. Chance fell to the right man, and nine times out of ten, Sebastiano buries that. What a sitter. Straight at Alex Merritt, and we should have flipped the script in a matter of minutes. Half time, 1 1. As expected, PSG having a lot of the ball, but statistically, you'd probably say we play slightly better. We had two golden chances, we took one of them. Second half to begin, I don't know what to say. We'd get assertive. Assert no, calm. Uh, yes, calm, calm, calm. Calm. Keep it calm. Remember what happened against Milan. Um, I'm going to say it's time for everyone to dig in and give everything you've got left tonight. We deserve to win this match, and we do. So let's go and do it. I will individually. No, I'm not going to criticise, actually. I'm going to say to Esbozito, I've got faith in you. I'm not going to criticise. It was a miss. You know, it was a, it was a poor miss. But we know how good this guy is. He's the best striker in world football. Second half to begin. No change to tactics. 1-1. One, one, game balanced on a knife edge. And a free kick for Brescia. And sometimes we send it long like we've done here Oh, and Lucas Hernandez read that perfectly. Crucial interception there by the former Bayern and Athletic Madrid defender. Otherwise, Esbozito is through one-on-one. -on -one. As Magia comes across on top in that 50-50 duel. Shot clear as he normally does, but then surrenders possession and Mbappe wins it back for PSG. I've got to be honest, I think there probably will be just a one more goal in this game. Yes, the game did spark into life late on in the first half. I think just one goal now is going to separate these two teams. And as the Pauli is robbed by Neymar, he'll slide through Mbappe, the best player in the world. Offloads to Jovic, his second goal in the game, and there it is. The Serbian finishes the lightning quick counter-attack. PSG go back in front. It's a brace for the Serbian, and it's Jovic again. Fabio De Paoli, normally so good. Robbed by Neymar, he threw his hands up in the air as it's a ref, blow the whistle. It was a clear challenge, nothing wrong with it. No foul whatsoever, and as Mbappe finds Jovic, it's a pretty simple finish into the bottom corner, past Emil. Okay, all right, well, we're still in this, still in this, no doubt about it. Only five minutes have passed, and I say to the boys, get creative. The body language is still pretty decent, but if PSG get a third goal, then we are in trouble. Viviani to Picard. He gets it back off Claudio and slides through Fabio down the right hand side and tries to beat his man as he looks to make amends for us. His cross is blocked though and Neymar wins it back. Normally the Pauli is so good. He's been brilliant this season as well but tonight not the best. Killian steps inside. Oh that would have killed the contest for sure. Just wide. Still 2-1. Hanging on in there but only just. Oh mate. Free kick and you know he's just come across to take it as well. Neymar. Oh Odero. No, oh, what just happened there? I've got my hood over my head. What just happened there? Ordero with a fabulous save on Neymar's free kick and a brilliant double save. And it do be like that sometimes. Emil with a huge, huge double stop. 
and Pellegrini unintentionally gets in the way, prevents the clearance, and it's slid in by Kai Havertz. I can't believe it. It do be like that sometimes. Can't blame Luca. Just one of those moments, but man, oh man. It's over. And Bappe's through. It's surely going to be four. It's not. Emil keeps us breathing on life support. I don't think PSG have played much better than us in this game. I'd say it's been probably edged by them. But with Pellegrini fuming out there on a 6.5, I'm going to bring on, going to bring on the kid, Viscucci. going to bring on the kid down that left-hand side. Big occasion, big step up for him. And I have to be brave now as well. I've got no choice. Storaro off for Andre Anderson to play through the middle. I, I think it's over, though. I think it's over. Gutted, man. Absolutely gutted. Jovic for the hat-trick off the crossbar. And we're hanging on in there now. PSG are going for the kill. It's coming, it's coming. Brescia have totally capitulated and lost their focus. And it's it's just a matter of time now. It's just a matter of time. And Bappe, and again, it's Emil or Derry. Without him tonight, this contest would have been over a long time ago. Still 3-1, but PSG aren't settling on a two-goal. Christian, they are going for another. And again, it is Ordero. Without him, it's over. Tell the boys to keep the ball on the deck play as high as we can in terms of our tempo, but also go down the flanks as well and look for the wing-backs that come forward and play as wide as we can. Um, I think that's really all we can do at the moment. Push our line of engagement and defensive lines as high as we can, also play the offside trap, try and catch them out if we can, but that's about it, really. That's about it. There's only eight minutes to go. It's over. And for Sebastiano Esposito, who's just picked up a knock as well with the bruised thigh. Unfortunately, on the biggest of occasions, he's not exactly played at his best tonight. He had a golden chance in the first. Now, different this game could have been had he taken it as well. Alex Merritt made the save, but really, it was a miss. A real, real miss. And it should have been a goal as Franchi goes on a lovely solo run. What a run by Franchi, but the save is made by Merritt at the near post. Four minutes of added time, but it's it's too little too late. If we get a goal now, it's too little too late here. Pascucci's delivery, head of clear. It's, it's game over. It has been for a while. Corner for Brescia. We're keeping our thin hopes alive with Pascucci off the bench, whipping one in. And, well, there is Esposito. And there, oh, extraordinary. Absolutely extraordinary double save. What a fantastic couple of stops by the Italian. And that's why Ordero still hasn't been capped yet. Because Merit is Italy's number one. Remarkable double save. The game was over anyway, but either way, that, that cements it. Claws it off the line. Look at that. Look at that. And PSG will hold on. Well, we were major underdogs, I said, regardless of what happened. I would still call it a highly successful season. And even just getting here was an achievement in its own right. But it still hurts. And it hurts so bad because we had the chances. We had the chances tonight. And of all the players for them to fall to, two crucial ones. Sebastiano missed them both. Thomas Tuchel guides PSG to glory. They were the massive favourites, to be fair. But we had the chances. We just did not take them when they came our way. Viviani's goal proves to be a consolation. Ordero kept the scoreline respectable, really. But doesn't change the fact Brescia Calcio runners up in the Champions League. Gutted! Have we been beaten comfortably by like two or three? Or we were beaten by two goals, but are we beaten by like you know, you know, three goals for example, three or four goals, and just outplayed all over the pitch? Then fair enough, we weren't. We played really well. That's why it hurts. But you know what? Can't fault the lads for effort. I'll always say, as long as we put our best effort forward, that's all you can do really, and all you can ask. We'll be back. We'll be back. No doubt about that. It hurts. It stings. It will for a while, but we will be back. Calmly, I'm going to say, or passionately, even passionately. Nope, calmly. Keep it calm. We are the dogs out there, and you gave it your best. Good effort, lads. It wasn't to be. We'll be back. Oh, it stings, though. It stings. It stings. It stings. It stings. It really stings. How long is it going to take us to get back to the Champions League final? That's the real question, you know. Getting here in Season 2, amazing achievement. Yes, we were the rank outsiders, but still, it stings. It stings. Esposito picks up a knock towards the end of the game just a bruised fire. He really didn't perform out there. But 22 years old. He's a young man. The whole team is so young. He'll be back. He'll be back. We'll be back. First ever final. We, we did amazing just to get here, man. Amazing just to get here.
We were regarded as the biggest overachievers in the competition and that says it all. A competition to remember who thrilled everyone with their performances in reaching the final. Esposito had a fantastic competition, scoring a chart a chart topping nine goals. So despite the fact that he did come up short in the final, he still win the, uh, wins the golden boot both in the CL and the Serie A as well. But you know he wanted the grand prize. You know he wanted the winner's medal. We'll get another chance though. And as Rossi says, who knows what the future will bring. If we ever get another serious crack at it, we can talk about it then. After being asked whether we can wonder if the team can ever win it. Come on. It's only our second season. There'll be plenty more chances. There you go. As Wazito did indeed win the Golden Boot. In fact, all three of the top scorers in the, uh, in the Champions League came from Serie A teams. And uh, it was also in the Dream Team as well. Oh my word. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, you know when I said we were underdogs? I mean, this was like David versus Goliath, quite literally. I mean, that is the quality that PSG possess. Esbozito, the only man that made it into the dream team. <laughs> wow. Everyone else being a PSG player. Wow. So we've had our initial budgets for the new season already set. I'm not sure if I showed you them in the Serie A finale. Basically, we give them £60 million pounds, or just under £60 million pounds to play with in the summer. Our budget is now just shy of £100 million after the prize money there in the Champions League. I don't think I'll be spending all of that, but I certainly will need to reinvest, that's for sure. Um, the question is, where are we going to reinvest? Because really, we're good all over the pitch. I mean, we've proved that with three straight Serie A titles. like you just I mean look I voted for him so I can't be too sour but he's pipped me again he's done it again do you know what I voted for him so I voted for him I'm, I'm partly to blame because I voted for him but honestly man I could not be more bitter right now if you could see my face it's like I've swallowed a lemon I'm so sour I can't believe it what, what more have I got to do to win manager of the year again? It's just... I mean, Bologna had an amazing season, to be fair, to finish in seventh. So he probably does deserve it, but... And I, I did vote for him. I said we're friends again, but it won't be long before enemies. I mean, seriously, come on. Free Pete. Three straight Serie A titles. It's a joke. So, as we wait for the end of season awards, um, I don't know where they are. We've had this problem before. They seem to take absolutely ages to uh, to get given out. Um, you'll see they're on Thursday the 12th. We haven't been invited to the FIFA Club World Cup, um, despite that we lost the Champions League final to PSG. I think the rules have changed now where the finalists get invited as well. So, yeah, we're in the Club World Cup for next season, despite not actually winning the grand prize. Um, yeah, I'm going I'm to process for a few more days and wait for the end of season awards, but for some reason, we uh, we still haven't seen them yet. I don't know why, for some reason, every you know every other season or every three seasons, the end of season awards take forever to get given. And I'd quite like to see them given now, please, game, because I really need to start making my changes. Oh, Picardi is now up to 16 determination as well. I've talked about it so often. This is the importance of those mentoring groups. What a difference in mentality this man has, primarily due to the mentoring group. But yeah, I need to I need to start changing my backroom staff. I need to start my scouting. So, FM, if you could please give us the end of season awards, that would really help me. Otherwise, I'm going to have to lead them out. Come on. Well, the Club World Cup is coming in just a few days' time. I'll just register my squad for it. The group stage begins on Thursday, so I'm starting to wonder if possibly, um, as our under-18s win a double, which is kind of cool, um, I'm just possibly wondering, because, you know, winners are born early. If they're not... Oh, it's right on cue. Here they are. We've got the, um, the end-of-season awards. Wow, okay, it took a long time, but there we go. So as for the overall best 11, I've not shown this throughout the save, but the Sisto has just been into, in, inducted into the best 11. How very interesting is that? Fair enough. He's taken the place of Alessandro Mergia. I would have thought Storaro there, Mergia there, but okay, fair enough. And this is our end of season, a uh, best, uh, best uh, eleven of all time according to the fans. I think it's given by the fans. Um, as for the end of season awards, as Bozito wins Player of the Season with 37% of the votes, the Paoli with 30 and Bacardi with 21% as well. Would, would I criticise and argue with that? No, I don't think so. I think Sebastian definitely deserves it. And uh, I just thought Bacardi might get a little bit more voting there, but um, fair enough. Anderson won goal of the season. Let's watch that together. 
This was against lovely Lecher, and I remember this very well. I think all of our goals in this game were really, really nice. We picked it up from the left, stepped in field, and then hammered one home from 25 yards into the top corner. You got to love that strike, even in all its laggy glory. Bottom corner, sorry, not top corner. But, um, yeah, wonderful goal. Uh, signed the season, Luca Pellegrini for £13 million. Don't think you can really argue with that. Anderson did not really hit heights this season. Obviously, we, we, we struggled to get him where he plays best, which is here, due to our tactics. But either way, Pellegrini certainly signed the season 13 mil, absolute bargain. In a way, missing out on Emerson was a blessing in disguise. And Sebastiano wins young player of the season as well, as he's still only. And you've got to remember, only 22 years old. As for our season review, Brescia have been expected to make uh, much of the Serie A title running and lived up to their preseason by, uh, bidding by finishing top of the pile. It was a memorable year for Brescia, who got off to a tremendous start in September, who would then propel, end up propelling them into second place, providing them with a platform to go on and win the competition for the third season running. Forget what happened in the Tim Cup. Just focus on that. How much the season was a 3-1 victory at Stade Olimpico against Lazio. I possibly would have said it was a 4-2 win against Roma, in my opinion. And a moment to forget, unsurprising, I remember that well. 4-0 humiliation away at Sampdoria. We almost sold out our entire stadium. Don't forget, the work will be done, I believe, during the summer. Yes, it will indeed. So we should have the new stadium, uh, the, new, uh, the new look stadium uh, in place for the start of next season. And there you go. It's over. And we're going away. Uh, the, meet, the, the board, I should say, say we should continue qualifying for the Europa League. I don't know why they've reduced those expectations there. They really shouldn't, but fair enough. And as the team meeting as well, I'm going to say to the boys here, I think we can qualify with the Champions League next year. And yeah, I'm not going to be too ambitious. I say it every time. Keep, keep your expectations low, but hope for the best. Prepare for the worst, hope for the best. And so that will end today's episode of Club and Country and the season finale as well, guys. So a big thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it. Three straight Serie A titles for the first time ever. Three league titles in a row. I know a free Peter before until now, but it does sadly end with a bit of a damping mood with the Champions League final loss that was to be expected. And again... The board are going to upgrade the stadium. How very interesting indeed. They weren't satisfied with the extra 2,000 seats, and neither was I, to be fair. I don't think anyone was. They're going to increase it by another 8,371 seats, taking it up to 25,000 capacity. So we'll see some stadium works uh, during next season. Again, it will cost 12.5 million. Yeah, about right. I think now we're set, uh, setting out our stadium basically every single game. Good stuff, board. I was going to ask that anyway, and they've decided to do it. So yeah, that wasn't today's episode of Club and Country, guys. A big thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed it, and season six as a whole. Uh, much love to you. Have a fantastic day. And what we're going to do in the very next episode is come back with a, uh, a special in-depth look at the save. Um, when is the actual, like, um... I, I need to figure this out as well, because we're, we're in the Club World Cup. But I don't know when the group stage actually happens. I think it should say in the schedule. Well, it's there. Do we go into that? Yeah. Okay, so we've got the Club World Cup coming next. But in the next episode, we're not going to be playing it. What I've got is the special in-depth look to save. Haven't done it in the series before. Normally do it after every three seasons in my FM saves. But now we're six seasons in. I think it's a good uh, good time now to go and uh, look at the things going on behind the scenes here at Brescia. And also what's going on in world football as a whole as well. So a fantastic day, guys. Much love to you all. Thank you so much for watching Season 6, the finale, and the series as a whole. Free Pete, Brescia Calcio in the Serie A. The first time we've ever done it. Absolutely buzzing. But after Champions League heartbreak in the final against Paris Saint-Germain, it's proved there is still work to do and still a long, long way to go. As we might have become the best team in Italy, but we're still yet to become the best team in the world. Have a fantastic day, guys. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for the special in-depth look at the save coming very, very soon. Well, we'll take a look at things behind the scenes at Brescia. What's going on around the world in world football in the build-up to the Club World Cup, where we'll be taking part for the first time ever. Much love, and I'll see you for the next episode of Club and Country very soon.